What's going on, folks? Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I wanted to cover some updates that came out for D&D Beyond. They put out a change log update that covers basically July through September, and if you've been curious, which I know a lot of us have been, how will the new 2024 Player's Handbook content impact what you have on D&D Beyond? What will get overwritten? Will things get tagged as both options where you can choose 2014 or 2024? If you want to know the answer to that, we actually now do have that answer. So let's go ahead and take a look. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing now. And I also do have a giveaway to win a copy of the 2024 Player's Handbook available right now. So go ahead and enter that giveaway. It runs for the next week or so. I'll put a link in the video description. So here it is. And there it says the 2024 Core Rulebooks Revised 5th Edition. Updating everything from base class to spells, an official digital tool set for the game, D&D Beyond is undergoing updates so that you can jump into play as soon as the new core rulebooks become available, which is great, that's what everybody wants. These updates kick off alongside the launch of Early Access uh, and will continue even after the release of the 2024 Monster Manual. Below are the key changes as well as things that won't be changing. What isn't changing? Access to 2014 rules and homebrew. I didn't even think about the lack of the homebrew rules, which is terrifying, honestly, if that was a thing, but I'm glad that they're keeping it. Uh, and hey, the fact that you can still have access to your 20, uh, 2014 content if you want it is huge because that would have done things like piss off so many people that they had this stuff and you're taking content away. But you will not lose access to the basic rules or your copies of the 2014 Player's Handbook Dungeon Master Guide or Monster Manual. You'll continue to be able to create characters in the character builder using these classes, subclasses, species, backgrounds, etc. All the monsters found in the 2014 Monster Manual will still be available. Great. And these materials will be marked with a legacy badge. Okay, that's basically what we thought we'd see when we, because that's what we had with like older species that were updated from like Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes to Morden Kanan's Monsters of the Multiverse, that kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, flag with a legacy badge if they are newer versions of them in the 2024 core rulebooks. Finally, existing homebrew will not be impacted by the changes we roll out. Even better. The legacy, or sorry, the exception to this is for homebrew that includes tooltips in their descriptions. We are updating tooltips and therefore homebrew that uses them will see changes to the reflection or change the reflection. Okay. That's not like a huge deal. What is the legacy badge? The legacy badge indicates material that does not follow the current rules of the game or lore. For example, when a Goliath was updated in Morden Kane Presents Monsters of the Multiverse, its former version and Elemental Evil Player's Companion received a Legacy Badge. When the 2024 Player's Core Rulebook releases, our Player's Handbook releases, the Goliath from Monsters of the Multiverse will also get a Legacy Badge. Okay, that's what we were thinking about, right? Although certain material from Monsters of the Multiverse will receive a Legacy Badge, the book itself is not considered a Legacy product. Interesting. So... Basically, in to some extent, in keeping with the backwards compatibility concept, the book is not considered legacy, but basically any of the species or so associated content inside it will be considered legacy. Marking old material with a legacy badge. Starting with the 2024 Player's Handbook and continuing through the release of the 2024 Monster Manual, we'll be updating the game rules to flag older material. The following materials from the 2014 core rulebooks will not be updated and will instead receive the legacy badge. Classes, subclasses that have a new version in the 2024 player's handbook, species, backgrounds, feats, monsters. So read that one more time. The following materials from the 2014 core rulebooks will not be updated, but will instead have the legacy badge. Okay, that's what those are. All right, and you can see here, they're kind of scrolling through. You can see all these expanded rules. There's the Artificer and then legacy versions of all of those. Updating tooltips and game materials in the toolset. With the rules revision, we are updating game materials in the toolset and in tooltips to be in line with the 2024 core rulebooks. The change impacts the information you will find on your character sheet in tooltips and is linked in the compendium. The following rules will be updated. Core gameplay definitions, armor class, Saving throws, skills and abilities, alignment, senses, blind sight, dark vision, true sense, tremor sense, or true sight, tremor sense, and area of effect definitions. That's largely because of like the existence of the word emanation to describe things. 
Uh, aside from a few exceptions, all entries for mundane and magical items, weapons, armor, and spells will also be updated to their 2024 version. For magic items, most of those changes will come with the release of the 2024 Dungeon Master's Guide. Further, all tooltips and links to monsters will also be updated to point to their newest version. The exceptions to these changes include the following. Feeble Mind and Branding Smite will be archived and replaced with Befuddlement and Shining Smite, respectively. If you already have Feeble Mind and Branding Smite on your character sheet, they will remain there until you remove them, after which you will have to add Befuddlement and Shining Smite to your spell list. We took this step to avoid confusion for players who may be unaware that Feeble Mind and Branding Smite have new versions under new names. The net weapon and all magic items that use it as a base weapon, e.g. plus one net, will be archived and replaced with the net adventuring gear. Yeah, so if you don't know, they changed the name again of Feeble Mind and Branding Smite to now be Befuddlement and Shining Smite. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I do believe the new version here, Befuddlement, has changes to the way the spell operates compared to the previous, and I'm not sure about uh, Shining Smite off the top of my head. But yes, and the other one here is that the net is no longer considered a weapon. It is considered a piece of adventuring gear, and as such, it does not have the ability to become a plus one version of it. All right. Backwards compatibility with 2014 material. You will continue to be able to play with game materials from the 2014 rule set, including classes, subclasses, species, background, feats. This older content will be flagged with a legacy badge. In many cases, it will be usable with the 2024 rules. If a subclass received an update in the 2024 player's handbook, you will not be able to use the older version with the 2024 class. However, you can continue using it with the 2014 class. Okay, so that makes sense, right? If I'm going to be using the cleric, I can use the 2014 cleric with the 2014 cleric subclasses. But if I'm going to be using the 2024 cleric and i'm going to be using a life cleric they're going to force me into using the 2024 life cleric all right uh, examples of these changes in backwards compatibility oh okay well you create a cleric oh man that's so funny <laughs> you create a cleric using the 2024 player's handbook at level three you get to choose a subclass you own the 2014 player's handbook and decide you want to use the knowledge domain subclass from that book you may select it in the character builder as you level up your subclass features will unlock according to the cl cleric's progression in the 2024 rule set. Okay, so that actually does, it sounds like it does the work for you for that, which is great. You create a sorcerer using the 2024 player's handbook. You also own Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which has the Aberrant Mind subclass. At level three, you want to take Aberrant Mind as your subclass. You can choose the 2024 version of subclass, which is known as Aberrant Sorcery, meaning you can't choose the 2014 version. You create a Warlock using the 2014 player's handbook. You want to select the Fiend for your subclass. Because you are playing with a 2014 Warlock, you can only choose to use the older version of the subclass. Okay. Your Dungeon Master wants to create a character for their Tomb of Annihilation campaign. You create a fighter using the rules in the 2024 player's handbook and want to take the anthropologist background. I use this as an example all the time. From the adventure, you select the background because of the revised character creation rules in the 2024 player's handbook. You will need to select an origin feat. Similarly, you will adjust your ability score increases to be plus one to one and plus two to another or plus three to uh, or plus one to three stats. Your character has a Great Axe equipped on their character sheet, or you hover over the Great Axe tooltip in one of your books. You'll see an updated entry for that weapon that includes the mention of the Great Axe's mastery property, Cleave. You want to reference the rules for Exhaustion, which were overhauled in the 2024 Player's Handbook. When you navigate to Conditions on your character sheet and click the entry for Exhaustion, you'll see the new rules for the condition, not the 2014 version of them. In a similar vein, any tooltip referencing exhaustion will show the 2024 rules of the condition. If you want to see the 2014 rules for exhaustion, you'll have to navigate to its entry in the basic rules or in the 2014 player's handbook in the compendium. Your character has Healing Word prepared and you want to cast the spell. When you click on the spell on your character sheet, you will see the new version of Healing Word. However, you can still find the old version in the 2014 and in the basic rules. An adventure you own that was published after the 2024 player's handbook references the Mastiff, from the 2014 Monster Manual. you When you click in the adventure to the Mastiff, you'll be taken to the 2014 version of that monster. Okay. Uh, in another case, you purchase an adventure that was released 
after the 2024 monster manual that references the Mastiff, when you click a link to the monster stat block, you'll take you to the newest version, okay? What if I want to use the 2014 version of a spell or magic item? If you wish to use the old version of a magic item or spell that has been replaced by the 2024 counterpart, you will need to create a homebrew copy of it and enable homebrew content on your character sheet. Then you can add it to your character sheet. It's not possible to create homebrew versions of mundane equipment. However, the only significant changes to weapons is the addition of the mastery property. You will still need the appropriate feat or class feature to utilize a weapon's mastery property. Mundane armor will not be affected by changes in the D&D Beyond rule set. Okay, I actually really appreciate all of the examples they listed. I think that does cover basically most questions that anyone would have. And then again, they're flat out being up front here, right? If you want to use an older version of a magic item or a spell that's been replaced by 2024, unfortunately, you're going to be forced into using the new one unless you want to create a homebrew version of it. So now is probably a critical time for you if you have access to uh, the 2024 player's handbook and know what's going to be changed or updated you're probably going to want to take whatever that is, uh, magic item or spell, and then go to like create homebrew and then create uh, like a copy of that and save it. So that way you have a copy of that. And I hopefully that won't change and your copy of the homebrew you have will just retain it so you can adjust it later if you want to. And it says UI updates to the monster stat blocks. The 2024 Monster Manual introduces changes to monster stat blocks. As a result, we will update the UI for monster stat blocks found throughout the D&D Beyond toolset. We do not have a precise, a precise date for when you will see these changes, but you can spec them before the release of the 2024 Monster Manual. And they show the direwolf here, which we'll talk about. Um, so it sounds like, again, because there are a handful of different creatures in the player's handbook, which is similar to what we had in the 2014 player's handbook, but they're saying they're going to slowly roll out these stat block changes, but we can't really, well, you can expect them before the release of the monster manual, but that's not until February. But if you'll notice, there is some significant changes to the creature, like the dire wolf, which they're showing here on screen. We can zoom in here and take a look at it, right? Which is, um, you can see the slight change in the way uh, everything is outlined but they took a pretty big hit to their hit points, dropped down from 37 to 22. They did get a bump in their perception checks uh, to plus five. They also now have dark vision, which is a thing we're seeing a lot more creatures like animals having access to dark vision. Interesting that they dropped keen hearing and smell from the dark or the dire wolf, which I thought was an odd choice because a lot of creatures did have access to that. And it makes sense for a wolf or a, a dog to have that. They do retain pack tactics. Um, so I think that that's pretty much the same from the look of it. And then their bite had reduced damage. It used to be 2d6 plus 3. It's now a d10 plus 3. However, as mentioned in my spell video, we see a lot of things. If they required an attack roll and that attack roll had some sort of conditional rider, like if I attack you and then I hit you, Instead of you having to then make a saving throw or have a condition, it just happens. So as you can see here with the dire wolf, if I bite and hit you and get, you know, with that, you are given the prone condition if you're huge or smaller. Now, previously, the dire wolf, there wasn't a restriction on the size of the creature, but you had to make a saving throw with a pretty low DC to not get knocked prone. Now, if my dire wolf bites you and you're huge or smaller, you are just prone. End of story. So I think that is an overall net positive for the dire wolf, but some honestly, the most and um, whatever their calculations were that the hit points are reduced is fine. Um, honestly, I'm most shocked by the removal of keen hearing and smell. It says notably, you'll see these changes. Monsters will display an initiative and an initiative score. All monster saving throw bonuses will be shown. Uh, armor class will be shortened to AC. Hit points will be shortened to HP. Vulnerabilities will be shortened. Damage vulnerabilities will be shortened to vulnerabilities. Damage resistances will be shortened to resistances. Damage and condition immunities will be combined into a single immunity section. Challenge and proficiency now follows this new format. Challenge rating number, XP number, proficiency bonus number. 
Uh, the monster features will be moved to the trade section. Books in the compendium will still reflect the original formatting used for monster stat blocks. For example, if you go into the 2014 monster manual, it'll show the original formatting. All right, updates to the character builder and character sheet. The 2024 player's handbook streamlines the steps to create a character and updates the character sheet. The character builder and digital character sheet are being updated to reflect these changes as well as changes in terminology. Changes to the character creation process. To keep in line with character creation, the steps in the builder will be updated. It'll be home, it'll be home, class, background, species, ability, equipment, as opposed to home, race, class, abilities, description, equipment. Okay? So just a different order to kind of match what the updated rules are. Updates to sources and book categorization. In the home tab of the character builder, you can already enable and disable game materials under the sources section. Okay, here are the updated categories. Expanded rules, game materials from other official sources, such as Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Legacy, game materials from 2014, whose 2024 Cower and Parts have been released. This category also includes other non-core content, such as One Grung Above. I always felt like One Grung Above should count as core content because it was part of like the extra life situation but that's fine so we can see here right um we used to have sources partnered content and that was it now we have sources and the options here are homebrew expanded rules or legacy partnered content showcasing everything here and then that's it so this is basically allowing you to expanded rules is including anything that is non um is non or sorry is official but not part of the core so over here we previously had dragon lance eberron planescape magic the gathering and then non-core D, D. uh dragon lance eberron planescape magic the gathering have been expanded or added into expanded rules and what was once called non-core D, D is now also considered to be part of the legacy content Homebrew and each third-party source, such as Critical Role and Humblewood, will continue to have their own on-off toggles. The core D&D rules from the 2024 core rulebooks do not have toggles, as they are always considered enabled. A quick note on the basic rules. Basic rules technically fall under the legacy category in the character builder, but you may notice that we're updating the primary sources of that material to reflect the books they come from. This is a change in data structuring on our end that doesn't impact the basic rules as you know them. They will remain free to access and play with just the same as they always have been. Changes in terminology. The following terminology will be updated in the character sheet to bring in line with the 2024 core rulebooks. Inspiration will be renamed Heroic Inspiration. Initiative score will be displayed when you click on the initiative button. Proficiencies in languages will become proficiencies in trainings. Racial traits will be renamed species traits. And description will become background. Other changes in terminology in the character builder and elsewhere in D&D Beyond, you will see updates to other game terminology. Species, subrace, and variant race. Race will be changed to species, and variant race will become variant species. In the D&D Beyond Marketplace, you will also see sub-race become species option. For older game materials, such as the Shifter from Eberron Rising from the Last War, you will see references to race and sub-race. Materials from previous books that have been revised in new releases will receive a legacy badge. For example, the 2014 Elf Species page will receive a legacy badge. Updated names of actions. The name of certain actions have also been changed. For example, the use an object action is now the utilize action, and the cast a spell action has become the magic action. These will be reflected on D&D Beyond. Makes sense? D&D Beyond is seeing big changes. Over the coming months, you're going to see a lot of updates to D&D Beyond and its suite of tools. And updating the website and tool set for the core rule revisions, we hope to make it easier for you to jump into the exciting new rules and player options we thank you so much for joining us on this journey. And this, I think, is the update of everything, right? This is, well, there's there's more July updates. Uh, I think this is stuff that we've already seen. So, yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much it. They just said there's a couple other, you know, books have released as well. So there you go, folks. So that is the updates to D&D Beyond. It's nice of them to go through and spell out what the changes are and what we can expect. It's good to know that it seems like things are going to roll out pretty smoothly. And for the most part, you're not losing access to things you had previously, which would be a big issue. I could already see stirring in the community if people were like, oh, wait, the stuff I already paid for, you took it from me and I can't use it. That may already happen for folks when they change like spells and magic items. But... 
Uh, again, there are some pretty significant changes to spells. I've referenced a couple of them in one video showing 10 different spells that changed. Some are general quality of life and overall improvements, in my opinion. Others are complete guts to the spell or just general nothing but positive buffs to the spell. So it's kind of a balancing act when it comes to the spells. There's ups and downs, but it is what it is. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on these D&D Beyond changes in the comments down below. I'll see you all next time.